This is the call to worship. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. The church is still at worship. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. given up heaven and given to us your begotten son so that through him we can be redeemed. Loving Lord, we are indeed thankful unto thee. We don't want to be great and grateful because when we see what Christ has gone through to save us and when we go back on him it is a pain. It is showing that we are ungrateful. How many of us could go through what he has gone through? And they have spat on him. They have ripped his flesh. They have given him vinegar to drink in his thirst, which he refused. And so, Lord, we want to give you thanks for our going to be those agony for us. That's why we are here today. We are not watching the crowd. We are watching the relationship that we have with you. Amen. Loving Lord, many do not understand who you are. And so if they want to have an understanding of who you are, they have to go to Job. And you will explain who you are. Loving Lord, we have a lot of people who are unbelief. They believe that what happened is a fake. And just like what happened back there in Noah's time, there was a lot of scientists. And so Lord, they were saying that nothing, no rain will be fall because they never see rain fall before. And so, Lord, they were doing all kind of manner of evil. And so the sons of men married into the sons, to the daughters of men, which in those times the sons of men are God's people who serve him. And the sons of men are 
the Jaconians, those who sold, sell their souls to the devil. And so, Lord, uh, this Satan has, has, has a myth saying that the, the sons of men are angels. Yeah. But, Lord, we want to mash down that lies today. Yeah. And so today, Lord, they are doing the same thing to the humankind. Yeah. And, loving Lord, when they have stepped their bound, you will step in. Yeah. It is no different, Lord, from that time until now. And we have seen what is happening. But Lord, they are tempting you. They have gone too far now. They are going into the human life. They are trying to play God now. But loving Lord, we know that you are going to overrule. Yes. And I pray that you will help us that we will not succumb to their evil. We must stand up. Yes. And sometimes we give in too quick because we do not have a relationship with you. And so we know that the weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So, loving Lord, I just want to pray for each and every one of us who gathered here today. That you will help us, that we will continue to hold on unto your changing hand. We know that they are trying to punish us. They are taking away the food. Lord, they have destroyed the crops. They have destroyed the seeds. Everything... They want to have in control because they want to control the human being. But only the one controller we have, it is the God of heaven. And so we trust you and we believe in you and we're not going to give up. We believe in your words and we believe every word that you said. And so Lord, we don't matter how big they are. We don't matter how educated they are. And so Lord, if you even have a PhD or whatever you have, and garbage come out of your mouth. And if the one who is uneducated, garbage come out of their mouth, it is still garbage. So loving Lord, have mercy upon us today as we come to worship you. We ask you for a special blessing and the special blessing that we are asking for is the power of your Holy Spirit. It is only the Holy Spirit that embedded in us can keep us and can save us from all this wickedness that is in the land. But loving Lord, if we remain faithful, we will rejoice and you will say, welcome my sons and my daughter. Inherit the kingdom that I have prepared for you. We will speak in a special way and the waiting con congregation. Send us a message we pray in Jesus' precious name. <laughs>
stand firm in the palm of his hand. He has preached here before and today he will preach the word of God to us this morning. But before he comes we will hear again from Brother Boy the song of meditation.
sermon, topic of my sermon is God is calling you. And the calling that I'm going to talk about or preach about is the calling, the Christian call. Some call to, some call to be a doctor, some call to be a mechanic, some call to be a, to be a teacher, some call to be a shit maker, some call to be a lawyer. But that is not the call I'm going to preach about today. Some call to be a nurse. Some call to be a pilot. Some call to be a construction worker. But that is not the call I'm going to preach about today. Some call to be a judge. Some call to be a strong 
storyteller, some call to be a fisherman, but that's not the call I'm going to preach about today. Some call to be a, a love maker, some call to be a ship maker, some call to be a soldier, but that's not the call I'm going to preach about today. Some call to be a police, some call to be a counselor, some call to be a pilot, but that's not the call I'm going to preach about today. Some call to be to be a good servant, some call to be a false witness, some call to be a, a bus driver, but that's not the call I'm going to preach about today. Some call to be president. Some call to be called to be some call to be at a wedding and some call to be ambassador. But that's not the call I'm going to preach about today. The call I'm going to preach about today is the calling of Jesus Christ. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, we see the first call. And out of the out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every falls of the air and brought them, un brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was their name. So God looked and he said, come here. The cow come forward. He never named cow yet, brought it to Adam. You name cow. You name donkey. And they obeyed. So what about us? As a human being have intelligence when God called us. Are we going to listen to his call? Are we going to run away from his call? He looked at the bird and he said, come forth. Adam said, you know, you know, you name Turkey Love, you name Bob Love. And that was the name. And they obeyed until this day. They listened to the calling of, of God. Even today, the fish understand the calling. They know whatsoever when earthquake is coming, or other disaster is coming. Yes. The bird know and they understand and they obey. Yes. What about us today? Are we going to listen to God calling? And if he calls us, would we run away? Or would we go and do whatever he advised us to do? Today, we will search the scripture and we'll see what God calling is all about. Amen. In the Bible, you, you don't need an encyclopedia to understand it. If you begin from Genesis, go to Revelation, you can understand it. It's very simple and clear. But you have to begin from the first beginning. If you know what is cow, go to Genesis. If you want to know who is mankind, go to Genesis. If you want to know where the star is, go to Genesis. If you want to know where the moon is, go to Genesis. If you want to know which day to worship, go to Genesis. Everything is written in the Bible. All you have to do is read and study and listen to the calling of God. That God called every human being just like he called the animals. He called us. Yes, sir. So today we look at another scripture. We look at Genesis 4 and verse 26. And to say to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos. Then begin men to call upon the name of the Lord. When you have a child, you begin to search for a name. And you want to give them that child a good name. And you call that child John, Brown, Mary, or whatever. And you should instruct that child to call on the name of Jesus Christ. The first, after third son, he was sent. And he called upon the name of, name of the Lord. And God listened to his calling. And he is always there at all times when we call him. He answered us. We look at Genesis 13 and verse 13. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughter will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Women call on the name of the Lord. And when they have a son or a daughter, they always love to give a sweet name, a sweet name, a good name. You, would, you don't give your child's name Delilah. You know, because that's not a name. I Jezebel. You look for a good name that people will respect and love. So at all time, let's remember to call on the name of the Lord. 
And when we call, he always answer and give us sweet, nice, good advice and listen to us. We look at Samuel chapter 3, verse 6, 8, and 9. And the Lord called, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for, this, for thou didst call me. And he answered, Call not, call. I call not my son, lie down again. And the Lord called Samuel again, and the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be. If he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hearing. If the Lord call you, are you going to listen? Yeah. Are you going to say, Speak, Lord, hear my send me. I will obey. Yeah. If you have a son or a daughter and you call your son, come here, my son. Go to the shop. Buy a pound of salt for me. Would that child listen to you? Or his daughter, come. Go. Wash the dishes. You think that child should listen to you and answer you? Yes, because you are the parent. So if God called us and sent us on a mission to go, why not go? God never called anyone and you, be, you become worse. Whenever time God calls you and sends you on a mission, you become good. You are a better person. He advises you and he teaches us because he was before you. He knows what your life is required and what you want. So he, he sent you. So listen to him and go. Go. We also look at Samuel. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 4. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 4. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. You hear? Who? If you have an enemy and they want to destroy you, who you should call? Call on the Lord. Don't call on the gunman. Don't call on your neighbor. Yet they can help. But it's main source of help. Your rose of all of hell, your stole, storehouse of hell is heaven, is in the Lord. Call on him. And as long as you call on him, he will answer, he will listen. He's not afraid to listen to you. He's always want to hear you call on him. Call on him to worship him. Call on him if you need, need money. Call on him if you need a house. Call on him if you need, need, need a job. He always there at all times to answer you. Amen. Give thanks. 1 Chronicles 16 and verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deed among the people. You hear? That you call on him and make known his deed among the people. It simply means go tell, tell the people that I love you. Go tell them to repent from idols. Go tell them to repent from their evil way. Go tell them that God is great. He made him on the earth. He is the protector and saving of your soul. Call on him. Call on him. And he will answer you. Amen. You have a friend? When you, when you want you're lonely, you take up your telephone and you say, Hi brother. Hi sister. I don't feel good. Can you pray with me today? And if that person is interested in having, say, okay, let's pray together. So, as you, so you call on your, your answer, brother and sister, you call on them, you can call on God and say, Lord, Lord, today I need you. Amen. Today, I need you. Yes. Today I see trouble. But today, Lord, you will answer me. Yes. And you pray. You will always be answered. Yes. Look at Job. Job 13, verse 22. Then call thou, and I will answer. Or let me speak, and answer thou me. Yes. Job always called on the Lord. And he always answered. You never read the scripture from Genesis to Revelation and you don't see that a soul that is trusted in God and believed in God call and never get an answer. They always get an answer and it's a good answer. Very, very good answer. So today we need to call. We need to call on the Lord in prayer. We need to call on the Lord and say, Lord, send me. Send me in this time to go and tell somebody about it. Some people, many people afraid today they come to church. They're afraid of the panel. This disease when they call COVID-19. But the Lord is always there to protect his people. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And he would never leave you to the enemy. He would never make anything destroy his people. 
He always there to protect them and to guide them, to call on the name. Why are we running away from God today? Why are the church closed on? Why does the government return and repent and say, and repent and say, Lord, you are the maker, you are the sustainer, you are the healer, you can heal our land, you can heal our body, you can protect us. You designed this world, and because you designed the world, Lord, you are the maker. I'm calling upon you today. Protection. Come repent. Just like Jonah goes in the Bible study, he go to the city, and the people repent and call upon God. And they were saying, so today we all can call upon the name of the Lord, and he will answer you. In any circumstances, he is there to always to answer you. We look at Job 27 and verse 10. Will he delight in him in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? Will you always call upon God? Or sometime you will call upon God? Tell me, today I want to know. No. I know in all time I will call upon my Lord. But he is there all the time to answer me and to heal me and to make me be a better Christian. And if he can make me be a better Christian, he can make you be a better Christian. He can make you, he can provide for you all the time of your life. Yeah. We look at Psalms 8, 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemy. Right through the Bible, if you go to the Bible, the choice to call upon the Lord. In any situation, in prayer, in sickness, in diseases, in enemy, in trouble, if a lion attack you, if a war, call upon the Lord. You see, Joshua call upon the Lord, he says, moon, stand still, sun, stand still, and he will obey. So what about we? Call upon the Lord, and he will always be able to answer our, our prayer. Amen. We look at Psalm 50, verse, verse 4. He shall call to the heaven from above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You see, when the Lord, we call upon the Lord, our enemy attacked us, our enemy attacked us, and we call upon the Lord, and the Lord save us, but we should glorify the Lord. Give him thanks, give him praise, not knowing that it is our own strength and our own mind and our own ability it is lord who defend us and protect us and guide us and keep us safe call upon him don't afraid to call upon him don't be like the heathen who said there is no god so they don't worship they don't worship the god they don't call upon his name he's not worthy the fool has said in his heart there is no god but because we are intelligent people because we made by the hands of god we call upon him and we should not call upon him just one time or two times we should call upon him in the morning Call upon him at midday, call upon him in the middle night. Whatever time you find it possible, always call on the Lord. He is there to help you. Amen. We, look, we look at Psalm 86. 86. For though Lord are good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee, in the day of my trouble I will call upon thee. Fire, thou will all thou will answer me. And that is found in Psalms 86, verse 5 and verse 7. So, and whenever anywhere you go through this world, if you want happiness, call upon God. If you want to be loved, call upon God. And He always is there for you, no matter what the circumstances here. We look at a favorite psalm, all of us know. Psalms 91. We look at verse 15 to 16. He shall cover me. And cover me and I will he shall cover me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I sanctify him and show him my salvation. So when you when you call upon the Lord, he's there. He's there to protect you. He's cover you. And if he's covered, nothing can touch you. You want to tell me, say, tell me. Uh, see if I have something to demonstrate to you and show you. Uh, cover you. If, I, if God cover me, co cover me. Let's see if I see something I can cover. Uh -huh. Cover you. What can trouble you? No one man can touch you. No other can trouble you. Nothing can trouble if God, God cover you. If I first thing of God take his being and cover me, you have to come touch. You have to come touch God first. 
Yes. And no evil can touch God. No gun can shoot God. No devil can touch God. So when God put his hand over you, you can't touch God. You can't touch him, so you're well protected. So some people got the pretty fast doctrine. I don't really get the idea from. If God cover you, I will tell them surely without, without any apology that God will never cover you. If God cover you, nothing can touch you and nothing can harm you. So call upon the Lord in trouble. I will answer you and he will cover you under the shadow of his wing. Just like a hen cover his chicken. Who, whosoever come from the country and when it, 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 it fall, see trouble. No, come, 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 come. I see all the chicken they run and I use and he cover them. They will protect them. And he's still looking out like this. He's looking around. He protected on fear. So when God cover you, call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon him. No fear to call upon him. We didn't trouble, call upon him. I call upon him lots of time. Lots of time and God protect me. He protect me. I'm not afraid to call upon him. So call upon him. Call upon him. We look <coughs> we look we look at Proverbs 31, verse 8. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her her blessed. So, if your children, when they do good, do good, and they follow you, see, they follow the example of you and call up and call up on God. So, call up on God. Whatever you do, evil and no prayer and nothing, your children will write and call up blessed. Because they see, what else you do is evil, evil. But all the time, just call upon the name of the Lord. He's Amen. there to help you. Amen. We look at Isaiah 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and put evil, and that put darkness to light, and light to darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Who? Whoa! A warning! A warning! A warning! So don't call evil good, and then oh, you come to church, and sit down and jump, and, whoo, whoo, and clap, and sing, and take part in the church. If you know, so you have a conscience, you should have a conscience to do good. And the conscience must set you free. But in the day of judgment, you're going to give an account for it. You get never given a call. So make sure, so whatever you do, you be from a clean hand and a clean pure, pure heart. But God see everything. So God, God is not blind and He keeps every record. He knows the sincerity of your heart when you call upon Him. If you're in bitterness, call upon Him. If you're in trouble, call upon Him. And He always will be able to answer. He, if you don't answer at the same moment, He never forgot your prayer. He always keep it, and you can't hide nothing from him. And he, do, he does not forget anything. He remembers everything in life. We look at Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. You see? Before even your child, the child was born, God see, and he know. And he give a sign and a warning. And tell him his name went to be. He look far beyond. He know the future. He read the future. And he know. So call, always call on God. We look at Isaiah. We look at Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great, great and marvelous things which thou knowest not. You see, things that hit from me and I don't know. What will happen tomorrow? Or what will happen this evening? God knows. No, no. And we tell him, He makes you know. He tell you. He reveal it to you. He reveal his secret to you. He show up himself to you. How many of us here can testify that you never even know that we come, some of us would come to America? We would not know us would know that we own a car. Some of us would know that we would, we would have a good job, have a good education. But God read the future. And he tell you, and you call upon him, and say, Lord, one day I want to have a home. And he answer your prayer. One day I want to drive a car. And he answer your prayer. One day I want to have a good wife. And he answer your prayer. God always ready to answer your prayer. Call upon him. Amen. Call upon him. Yes. Call upon him. Amen. Amen. Okay. We look, we look at Jonah 1 and verse 6. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so, be that God will think upon us and we be and we be first not. You see, if the heathen and that man that was sleeping and the shipmaker in the boat or in the ship said, Get up man, 
All right, up, man. Get up. Call up on your guard. Call up on your guard. But he get up and call up on your guard. Because he know he have, he know he have a guard. And he know have a good guard. A true guard. A merciful guard. A loving guard. And he call up on him. And he tell him the truth. He tell him the truth. He said, you know, you know I'm the troublemaker here. I'm the one who causing all these things. So you know what? Throw me in the sea. Throw me in the sea. But although he throw him in the sea, God never leave him, nor forsake him. He said, a submarine for him. And the first submarine that designed and made it was God made it. God made it. And God never the submarine never perish. It still abide forever. And that submarine take him up, which you call a whale, and pick him out. And he go and do God's work. So when God calls, if you go preach, if you do God's work, you can't run away. If you go in the bottom of the sea, he's there. If you go in hell, he's there. Yes. If you go in the mountain, he's there. Amen. Go and do God's work. If God calls you to do something, go and do it. You can't run away from God. And you can't hide from him. He's there night and day. He behold everything. Call upon him. I'm not ashamed. Are you ashamed to call upon God? No. I don't think anybody is here to call upon God. Damn God. We know some things take us. And you say, if, you, if, you, if it wasn't God, I couldn't be saved. If it wasn't God, I couldn't be saved. It was God have a hand in here because we call upon God. And when we call upon, we put faith. We put faith in action. And when faith giant action we call, it's, it's have to complete. It must complete from a clean hand and a pure heart. So we call upon our God. We don't afraid to call upon our God. We look at, Zac we look at Zachariah 13 verse 9. And I will bring the third part to the fire. And we will find them as silver is refined and we try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and i will hear them and i will say it is my people you see when you call upon god god know you you know that if you are his people and he listen to you and he takes you through troubles and trials and creation great definitely testing you that's why he say test through fire go through fire the gold put in fire and try and be beat up and come out of you know it's a pure gold so we go through trials and tribulation and God will find us to test us to know if we are good Christian, if we are true Christian, or we just a mode say Christian. He knows our action. And because he knows he tests us. And when God tests us, we should be happy. We should be happy. Sometimes you go to school and the teacher gives an exam, test you. You see how strong you are, how educated you are, or if you are learning and you give a test. But when God tests you, make sure we pass the test. You might can fail school test, but don't, don't fail God test. Don't fail it, because you fail it to be lost. It's cast. And we don't curse God when he gives us a test. We should be happy, because the test that he gave us is to purify us and to make our election. God is sure. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm, no, I'm just feeling good now. I'm just feeling good to preach God's word now. To tell you about the Lord. I'm just feeling good today. Okay. okay, we look at... Let us look at Matthew. Matthew 9, verse 13. But go he and learn what that means. I will say, have mercy and not suffer. For, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinner to repent of Say so if you're a good man, good man, or a good good man, or a good Christian, we need to call on God. We need to go and tell the sinners, the wicked people, that God loved them. He wanted to say, go call on your God, and he will have mercy upon us. He will have mercy upon us. He never failed no one. He never failed. Go preach the gospel. But this gospel that we are preaching must go into all the world, to every nation, king, red tongues, and people. And the gospel we are talking about is Jesus' gospel, the Christian gospel, the everlasting gospel that was given from the creation and the beginning of creation and the last the world and world. So we must go and preach it. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call on people, tell them to come. Come to repent and come to Jesus. He loved them. And because he loved them, he loved me and he loved you too. Okay, we look at Matthew 22, verse 43 and 45. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Say, if David then call him Lord, how is he his son? How is he his son? 
David, for, David looked at his future and know that there is a Savior and his name is Jesus. So he called him Lord and he called him Savior. So if David can look down and be seen, our children and grandchildren, we should teach them, teach it the way that there is coming a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. His name is just, we must call upon him. And if we call upon him in any circumstances, he always there to answer us. And if he answer us, and we answer him when he calls him, we will do better in life. Yeah. We will understand the word more. We will go and tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I never run away from Christianity. I never run away from God until from my born until now. I always listen and wait for him to call me and I will answer. Yeah. Answer him because he's a good person. Yeah. Yeah. We, look, we look at Mark 2 verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I, I came not to call the righteous, but sinner to repent them. So today, if you're a sinner in here, which I don't believe anyone in here is a sinner. I believe in everyone, every, every one of us in here loves Jesus. And if we love Jesus, we are a repentance. But if we have any sin in here today, I have in our minds and our thoughts, we are coming to Jesus and Lord, we are saying, Lord, today I'm called upon you. I want you to answer my prayer. I'm repenting from my sin. I'm repenting my false idea. I'm repenting from backbiting. I'm repenting, Lord, because I love you. And I want to be saved in your kingdom. In the last day, Lord, so I'm called upon you today. Answer me. Have mercy upon me. Deliver me from all trouble. Deliver me from pain, from backbiting. Deliver me from my enemy, oh my God. I put you first in, in my life, Lord. I love you, Lord. And because I love you, Lord, please answer me, my God. I'm calling upon you. But there is no one else to be called upon. Mother God, Father God. But I love God. And you be here for me. I call on you. Let's look at Mark 10, verse 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And, and they said, Call the blind man. Say unto him, Be of good comfort. He called him. If a blind man, a blind man, never see Jesus, never see Jesus, you will hear about him. And he want to be saved, still be saved, and he called on Jesus. And Jesus said, Bring him forth. How faint, how great is that man? And we have what two eyes. We can read the scripture. And we understand the scripture. And the blind man could believe and come. And Jesus said, and Jesus released him and healed him. How happy is that man? How happy we should be when delivered Jesus delivered from our sin and healed us. And whatever we do that was wrong. We should be happy and give him praise night and day. Look at a blind man sitting at the roadside, maybe he's begging, begging, begging. Give me a penny, give me a halfpenny, halfpenny, give me a farthing, give me a dollar, give me a twenty dollar. And now the man is rejoicing. He believes in his Savior. He just called on his name and he obeyed. He can be checked to a faith. Can be checked to our imagination so far and look to the Jesus, the one that made him an earth. Why are we not afraid to call upon him? We call upon him because we love him and we want to be saved. So, brother and sister, call on the God. Yes. Call in the circumstances. Call on him. I'm warning you. I'm telling you because I love you. And those on YouTube, call on the name of Jesus Christ. Call on him. Repent. Any problem you have, call on him. And he will solve it. There is nothing too hard for him. Amen. Nothing too hard for him. Amen. We look at Mark 15, verse 12. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will he that I that I shall do unto him whom is called king of the Jews? He, Pilate know, know that he is king of the Jews. He called him king of the Jews. He know. And if he know, he, he should repent and call on the name of his name. But yet the people who God bless, who God feel, how many take feel, they cannot crucify him, crucify him ungodly they should be called and give repent of their sin he said crucify him yet he do so much thing for them 
He feed them. He heal them. He heal them. Yet they cry out, crucify him, crucify him, which they should be called in the name of the Lord. Call him for blessing and give him thanks. For their sickness, we feed them where they're hungry and grateful and thankful. Have you known of anybody in your life that you do any good to? They were in trouble and you redeem them and they, they're ungrateful. They're not giving you thanks or call, call you. Send them to school. Maybe help them to buy a car. Maybe help them to pay their mortgage. Maybe help them to get green card. Maybe help them to get citizenship. And they get them done ungrateful and unthankful. They just can call you and say hello. That's not call and thanks. But they crucify you. Have you known of anyone like that? But today, we should all repent and call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In any circumstance, call on him. We look at Luke 1, verse 13, 48. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zachariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. All through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is showing you how to call upon the name of the Lord. In any situation, before the child was in born, born is a call and give you a name. Give a name. Eh? Give you a name. So today, my brothers and sisters, I love you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. So today, I'm um, advice again. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on him. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. The scripture never said you should get weary and tired to call on the name of the Lord. So I advise you, call on the name of the Lord. Call on him. In any circumstance, call on him. Okay, let's go. We look, we look, we look at Luke 14, 22, 13. Then said he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a, a, a dinner or a supper, call not the friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbor, lest they also bid thee again. And I will repent, and I will recommend thee, thee. But when thou call, call the poor. Verse 13. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. You see, Jesus, I'm reading from Luke, Luke 14, 12, and verse 13. But call the poor. Why did Jesus say call the poor? Why did Jesus say call the lame? Why did Jesus say call the handicap? You see, they are poor. They don't have nothing. When you call the rich friend and you give him a big plate of food today, tomorrow he can call you and give you a little plate of food. So it is not no blessing. But when you give to the poor, call the poor and give him, him give him, he don't have nothing to give you. So you get a blessing. When you call the blind, he can't sit to work, you don't have nothing. So when you call him and feed him, Jesus has appreciated, he thank you and he blessed. So let's call on those people. Let's just go around and call your friend. When you see a poor people, they don't have no ride. They can't buy a car. So they will drive or pass them. But I always stop and ask them, my brother, my sister, can I give you a ride? No, yes. Those are the people we should look to in life. Those are the people that Jesus associates associate himself with around in the country. Not the rich. Not the rich. The poor people. The one that's just a call. Call, call them. So remember, when you're keeping something, or you're cooking your dinner, always call somebody who will have nothing. And your blessing will always be, will never hungry. You will always have food to eat, my brother and my sister. Let's go again in John 4, 6, John 4, 16. Jesus said, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, cousin, and come hither. You see? Jesus always has sent out a call. Jesus always has sent out a call. Are you send, sending out a call? Tell me. Are you sending out a call? Who did you call this week? And tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. Tell me, who did you call? Did you call your neighbor? Did you call your mommy? Did you call your friend? I did you call your boss and tell him about the love of Jesus Christ. Who did you call? Jesus said, go call your husband. Yet she was lying. Jesus said, no, you can't tell me no lie. I know everything. I was here before you. I know the beginning from the ending. You have five husbands, and the one that you have now is not yours. So you can't hide nothing. Anything you do in that, that is Jesus see, Jesus know. So Amen. go call somebody and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. We look at John 13, verse 13. 
he called me master and lord and he said and he and he said well for so i am so if we call him lord and master he is true he's lord and master so let us just lift our hands to him and say lord you are my master you are my lord you are my king you are my savior you are my redeemer you are my peacemaker peacemaker in you i find happiness i find joy i find comfort i find prosperity i find help so i'm calling on you call on you. Call on you. let's go to acts let's go to acts 2 21 and 39 and, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved right to the bible right to the bible is telling him to call on the name of the lord so my brother and sister don't forget tonight when you go go on your knee lay down not the best way in humbleness and me is go on your knee and say lord i'm calling upon you because your name is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of going down here lord i need your help i need your help today lord i need your help i need your answer tell me what to do i want to be a servant of you today lord so send me and i will go i will listen to you call on the name of the lord my brothers and my sister let's go to a few more and then close let's look at let's look at first Corinth, first corinthians 1 and verse 2 and to the church of god which is at Corinth, to them that are sacrificed sanctified in christ jesus call to call to be saved with all that is in every place call upon the name of the lord lord jesus christ our lord both both dear and our soul so let all our soul call upon the name of god don't call upon him half-hearted call upon that whole complete let your life picture picture him picture jesus like he's here today and call upon him Suppose the president called to come to the White House, come take a tour. What many of us would be glad to go because we've never been here. We've never been here. Or the Queen of England said, call us and say, come, let's take a tour of the palace. One of us would be here and we'd be glad to go. But how if the kings of king call you? Would you answer him and would you go? Yes. He's the best one to listen to and to go. We review her the palace. When they call and say, oh, what's beautiful, oh, it's glorious, it's magnificent. But when the kings of king call you and send you on a mission, that's the best thing. You will never lose your reward. You will never. It will be with you forever and ever and ever and ever. But when he call you and he give you assignment, it's a good assignment. And it will never vanish away. It will never, never, never vanish away. We look at first. We look at first Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 22. More, moreover, I call God for a record. Listen to this. Listen to this. More, moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you. I came not to say yet unto Corinth. You see? So when you call upon God, call upon for a record. But this record is going to be with you in judgment. In the judgment bar, your record will be there. And your record must be clean. So when you call on him, call with a clean hands and a pure heart. Tell him your sorrow. Tell him your burden. Tell him all. And make sure when, when you call, make sure that your record is clean for whatever he mutually sent you. Make sure you accomplish it. But in the day of judgment, remember there is a record. And the Bible tells you also, call upon him. Call upon him. Okay, we will look, look at Second Second Timothy verse one and verse five. When I call to remembrance, the, the, when I call to remembrance the unfair faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in the grandmother Lucis, Lucis, and thy mother Enos, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So you see, so when you call the faith should be in your grandmother and your grandfather and your children call you see so it's not only me and you your grandparents supposed to be dear call 
call. So let's always call to remember. Call your children, call your husband, call your wife, call your neighbor, call your workers, and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ, my brother and my sister. I'll read them two more and then close. We look, <clears throat> we look at 2 Timothy 2 and verse 22. See, flee also, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of pure heart. Out of pure heart. So flee. Anything that is not good, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And come to God with a call and come with a clean hand and a pure heart. That's the call you want to be. I'm going to call that God listen to you. No care what the circumstances, no care how difficult it is, no care how terrible it is when you call, He also will listen to you and will obey, hear your prayer. And we look at the last one and then I close. We look at, we look at Hebrew 10, verse 32. But call to remembrance the former days. You hear? So remember, remember your days. Remember when it's going up by you. Remember, remember when you were suffering. Remember when you have no education. Remember, remember when you have no job. And you call upon God. And He gives you a job. He gives you education. He gives you good things. He gives you food to eat. He makes you travel. He gives you a visa. He gives you everything that you want. Remember those days. Don't be ungrateful to God. Don't be ungrateful. Remember, remember. He were they which after he were illuminated, he endured a great fight of affliction. Tr trouble was coming your way. Bad things was ha happening to you. Ah, can't think what happened to you. You don't see you don't see any way out. But you call on God. And with the call on God, he answer your prayer. Don't be so ungrateful. Don't be ungrateful. Remember him and praise him and glorify him. And remember his goodness toward you from day to day. God never called anyone and they suffer. God called Abraham and he's a better person. Amen. God called Daniel and he's a better person. Yes. God called Noah and he's a better person. Amen. God called Jonah and he's a better person. God called Elijah and he's a better person. God called the 12 disciples and he's a better person. So today, my brothers and my sister, if Jesus called you, answer the call. Answer the call yes. and be obedient and go do his mission. Amen. God bless you all. Take Lord. care of him. Amen. God bless you always. And remember to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 The call. Jeremiah 33, verse 3 said, Call unto me, and I will answer. And show you great things that we know is Brother Bromley, I want to thank you for these words of encouragement and reminder that we must call upon the Lord. May God continue to use you mightily Amen. as you continue to listen and answer to his call. Amen. And to bring this profitable service to our close, we will sing in number 569. Number 569. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others of our calling.
O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with sound. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. This is a story. Mm -hmm. 